Have you ever heard of something called like an addictive personality? If you're a high performer out there, then you've probably heard of that before. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys how you can discover an addiction that you have. Make sure that you replace it with a good addiction so that you can go out there and have more success in your life. My name's Nicholas Bailey. I actually struggled with all different types of addictions and I didn't know that it was actually a positive thing. If you're brand new and you have not subscribed to this channel yet, you're gonna wanna do this right now because you already know that this is like the place that you wanna hang out. End of story. You've already made the conclusion. That's how quick it happens. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. And again, I'm gonna be talking about addiction. This is from someone who actually went through this before. Not only did I get 60 pounds overweight, which probably didn't happen because I just didn't like food and I didn't like, no, like I had an addiction towards food. I would, I remember like stuffing gummy bears. Like you, if you were to take my sheets up when I was a kid and my bed was against the wall, like all these Reese's and all these different candies would like go flying out because I would eat them in the middle of the night and I would stuff in my bed. And different people struggle with different types of addictions. And, and what I mean by addiction is when you fiend for something, when you feel like you need something that you truly don't need. And this is the kicker. This is like the big thing that I do to discover addiction. How do I know it's actually an addiction and not just something I'm passionate about or something that I like doing? Generally, when you take action, so when you have an addiction, it becomes a desire. Because whatever we think about, we start desiring more. So think about this for one second. If you were to be on a diet and you're thinking about cake and you're like, I don't want to eat cake. I don't want to eat cake. I don't want to eat cake. Generally that increases our desire for it. And how I know it's an addiction or something that's, uh, that's something that is not that good for me is generally when you do the activity and then afterwards you feel bad. You feel like a little bit of shame. You feel like, man, like I probably shouldn't have done that. And that's when you know that there's no boundary, that you're off the rails and you wanna make sure that you now replace that with something new. And realize also that this isn't something that's negative. If you have an addictive personality, that's just someone trying to stereotype, to put a, some type of label on someone that's highly motivated and highly focused, which I know that is you as well. So for me, it started off with being overweight, but also during that time, I had 300 and 65 days played on one video game. And now for the people that don't know me now, like my business has been featured in Forbes for doing seven figures. I've been featured in Entrepreneur of reaching hundreds of thousands of men all over the planet and changing the world with a healthy body. I have a baby on the way. I'm married for seven years and I was able to transform my whole life from a kid who was addicted to video games. My life literally looked like I would go to school, I'd come home and I'd play video games from 3 p.m. to one in the morning every single day. I'd wake up at 5 a.m. to be able to go to school and I'd come back and do it again. During the summer, I would go to bed at 7 a.m. while all the kids were out partying, having fun, doing whatever. I was overweight, I was binge eating and I was playing video games from 6 a.m. till again like I would wake up like sometime in the afternoon. I'd go play video games again. So for you, it might be a different thing. Like a lot of people struggle with drug addiction and alcohol addiction, and generally men struggle with this because of a dopamine addiction. This is why guys can get so into sports that they don't even play, right? And they can feel depressed after if their team loses is because they have this dopamine high when they're scrolling through social media, when they're going out there and they're, they're getting these different things to fill these voids, they get this dopamine high and then all of a sudden like they need more and they need more and they need more. And the thing is you can actually implement that into your life to see more results. So what did it feel like when I was actually out there addicted to video games and addicted to food? These were two huge addictions of mine. And one of the biggest things that I felt like, especially when it came to video games, was that my family would consistently go on vacation and I didn't wanna go. And at the time, did I think I was addicted to video games? No, I didn't even think about addiction. I didn't even think about the problems. But at the time, like, what's one sign that I should have seen is that, is this activity going to give me the life that I would have wanted and that I would have desired? Is being overweight something that I desired? Is, is putting all my energy into a video game what I desired? Is building a life that was fake something that I desired? But I never even took a second to learn I didn't have a video like this. So I remember like back in the day when my parents would go on a vacation, they're like, Nicholas, do you wanna go? I'm like, I'm consistently thinking about the game in the back of my head, like, oh, do I really wanna go out there? And when I was in social environments, I constantly wanted to go home. I would leave social environments, I'd create like this reality where I kept wanting everyone, like, I think it's time to leave now. I kinda wanna go now. When we go on vacation, I would try to shorten it. I'd always be thinking of how can I get back to that game? How can I get back on that game? And how can I make progress in that area of my life? And I'd consistently be fiending for that. 
and it really wasn't until, and I'm gonna get into some things that you can do to actually get out of it, but for me, it wasn't actually until I started actually losing the weight and started focusing on myself and growing myself first that it actually started opening up to my world. Because what ended up happening is I was a fit kid that all of a sudden got addicted to video games. And then as I got more out of shape and, out of, and overweight and all these things, it became harder and harder to give up that new identity that I had created. Because now I was also ashamed of who I had become. I was ashamed to go out there and, get, and make new friends. I was ashamed to go meet new people. And it was just so much easier to continue down the route and the road that I had consistently gone down. But what all of a sudden I started seeing is as I started getting healthier, I started experiencing things and some of that shame and some of that self-confidence issues started falling off me. And I started thinking, like, what are my friends doing? Like, What are people doing out there? What could I go do? And it wasn't until I started actually getting into a different thing. So one of the things that you can do to replace addiction right now to make this actually a healthy habit is most people will tell you, just stop doing it. Stop doing drugs, stop drinking alcohol, stop having a porn addiction, a sex addiction, all these things, stop doing that. But what happens, I told you at the very beginning of this video is that if you're on a diet and all you think about is like stop eating cake, stop eating all this different junk food, what ends up happening is by thinking about not doing it, you actually build your desire to do it because whatever you focus on is gonna increase. Whatever your attention goes to, your desire will flow to as well. And all of a sudden you'll finally just go, you know what, this will be the last time. I'm just gonna go eat it right now and then I'll eat it and then I'll be satisfied and then I'll never do it again. And then what ends up happening is you end up going on this binge or you end up going on a relapse or you end up doing the same thing over and over again. And I remember losing the weight, quitting video games, and I remember going on the best surf trip of my life and I just felt like I was on top of the world. I had. I had removed something from my life and replaced it with a healthier activity, something that was gonna to contribute to my main goal in life. And I remember coming home from that surf trip and just having that temptation. So tip number two is going to be remove it from your environment. I came home, saw that computer, and I was like, man, I should just get on and just check to see if some of my friends still play this game. 20 days straight, I did not leave the house, I did not leave that room, I ate my food there and I stayed on that game for 20 days straight and luckily when I, I had another trip plan when I was supposed to leave and go surf and get me outside of that environment and I decided after that I need to remove this from my environment because I found something better but I continue to relapse towards this thing because it became so easy. This would be the equivalent of if you wanna stop eating ice cream you probably shouldn't put it in the fridge. Right? You should probably make it something very hard to be able to go, go, go get or a high price. I always tell people when I was helping people lose weight, if a pint of ice cream was 500 bucks, would you still want it? And they're like, no, it's not worth it. I'm like, oh, you only want it because it's convenient. But as soon as there's a high enough price on it, now all of a sudden you don't want it. And it decreases your desire for that thing. But just because you end up getting out of some type of addiction and now you're like, playing, other things can be an addiction as well. I know that for me, like I started surfing a lot and then I ended up getting into coffee and I had all these different desires and I wasn't taking care of my responsibilities in life. I didn't feel like I was being purposeful. I would chase all these different things that I, I ended this bad addiction. I wasn't doing anything necessarily bad, but I wasn't also discovering my true purpose, which is the biggest thing. If anyone could get something from this video, imagine being able to do something over and over again that you actually enjoy and be able to implement something into. It took me years to be able to do this. Got addicted to surfing, motocross, coffee, golf. I golfed literally. I hit 240 golf balls every single day for a year and a half. I was at the golf course that often. I played four days a week on top of the 220 balls that I hit every single day. And I realized something that someone told me which was, how you find your purpose is where you mix your passions and responsibilities. I was passionate, I was excited about that thing, golf. It wasn't a bad addiction anymore. It was just something that I enjoyed doing and I have that addictive personality. But I realized when someone said responsibilities, my mind was blown. I was like, golfing is not my responsibility. My responsibility is to impact people, to put education out like this, to provide for my family, and that's doing none of these things. And so all of a sudden I realized, what are the things that are those areas for me? So ask yourself, what are your passions and your responsibilities, and how can these things overlap? So just to be able to conclude, 
Again, how do you know it's an addiction? Something that you're always fiending for, like you always are sabotaging everything else to get back to that thing. How do you know it's a negative addiction? Because when you do it, you feel shameful afterwards. Not only do you replace something, like get rid of it, but you wanna replace it with something better in return. You wanna get yourself a new activity that you can do, and you wanna up-level those activities by asking yourself, when are your responsibilities and your actual passions, how do they actually overlap? And the best way that you can do that is actually by getting into a community. Community, which in the description below, you can actually join our Facebook group if you're a man, which is called the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Facebook group. This is like over 2,800 other guys that are just like you and I that are going after big things in life because your neuro networks, like your what you're learning is one thing, but if we're still all alone, it's worth suffice to go back to our same habits. But if you're around people that are successful, if you're around four successful people, you're just deemed to be the fifth. If you're around five drug addicts, you're probably gonna be the sixth. If you're around five successful people, People, you're probably gonna be the six. So surround yourself with a good community of people. Right now, maybe get rid of those people that aren't good. And then join the brotherhood and be that person who replaces those friends with new friends that are gonna influence you to be better. Again, if you like this video, make sure to give that a thumbs up. If you have any questions, drop them below in those comments, and we're gonna be coming out with more videos as well. Thank you so much, and continue to consume things that are gonna get you to elevate your game, to drop addiction, and to go after your passions in life.